talking about the argument from design. Specifically, the claim that we can look at the universe all around us and see signs that it was designed by an intelligent mind. In other words, by God. Now, over the next several episodes, we're going to take a look at signs of design in biology, starting today with defining what Michael Behe calls irreducible complexity. Now, I know we have several skeptics who watch this program who, as soon as I uttered the words irreducible complexity, are probably chomping at the bit to get to the comments section and list off all the objections that have been raised against Behe. For this week, I'm just asking for your patience. I will get to addressing the most common objections, but for right now, I need to define what irreducible complexity means for those folks who aren't familiar with the concept. Now, in his book, Darwin's Black Box, Michael Behe says this, By irreducibly complex, I mean a single system composed of several well-matched interacting parts that contribute to the basic function wherein the removal of any one of the parts causes the system to effectively cease functioning. He gives the example of a traditional mousetrap. In order to function, a mousetrap needs several different parts, a platform to put everything on, a spring, a hammer, the holding bar, and the catch. All these pieces together are part of one interconnected system. When the mouse takes the cheese, the pieces all work together to spring the trap. The inner workings of this machine make it complex, but it's also irreducible because if you take away any one part, you don't just get a less efficient mousetrap, you get a useless piece of junk. If there's no spring, then the mouse can take off with the cheese without anything to make the hammer come down. Without the latch, the hammer can't be held back in the first place. And without the base, there's nothing to keep all the pieces together. You see, a mouse trap only works if all the pieces are in place. This makes it irreducible. Now that stands in contrast to what's called cumulative complexity. To illustrate this, Douglas Grotheis gives the example of the complexity seen in all the interweaving streets and buildings in a major metropolitan city. A city may start out as a small town with only a few short buildings and a couple of streets. But as time goes on, it gradually gets bigger and bigger with an even more complex system of roadways. That's cumulative complexity. It's a system where complexity gets built up piece by piece. Now, if Darwinian evolution were true, it might be able to explain cumulative complexity. But could it offer up an explanation for irreducible complexity? It wouldn't seem so. As Behe notes, since natural selection can only choose systems that are already working, then if a biological system cannot be produced gradually, it would have to arise as an integral unity in one fell swoop for natural selection to have anything to act on. In fact, Charles Darwin admitted as much in The Origin of Species. He said, if it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous, successive, slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. So are there any irreducibly complex systems inside the cell? Well, Michael Behe says yes. And next week, we're going to see why. See you then. God bless.